Hi there, my name is Rich Gordon. I'm the director of EMED 5008, and I want to welcome you to the course. What I'd like to do right now is give you a brief overview of what to expect in the several months to come and how to best maximize your time to get the most out of the course. I think that if you put in your time, you'll not only learn a lot, but find the course quite enjoyable. So why does the EMED 5008 course even exist? Well, we put it together as a course to bring awareness to medical students that ultrasound is no longer just a tool for radiologists. We want you to know that ultrasound is a tool that is now being used quite widely at the point of care. We also call it point of care ultrasound. Some people call it POCUS for short. Others call it just plain bedside ultrasound. And what this is, is ultrasound conducted real time at the patient's bedside. So you're getting images at that point of care while you're involved in the care of that patient and getting answers to specific questions that you can immediately integrate into your care of that patient. Ultrasound is no longer just a imaging tool that is conducted in the bowels of the hospital and images being sent to a radiologist where the radiologist then reads those images and sends them to you for you to integrate them into your care of the patient. It's also important to understand that point of care ultrasound is now being widely taught to junior medical students. This is first and second year medical students. So in the first and second year of their medical school experience, they're already learning the basics of the machine how to acquire basic images, what do normals look like. And they're carrying this knowledge up through their senior year medical school years and into their residency where they can begin on arrival in residency learning clinical ultrasound, starting to integrate normal and abnormal images into their care. And they can already build on a healthy foundation that they were able to cultivate through the first couple years of medical school. We hope that with this course, you'll start to get some basic knowledge that'll help prepare you for residency because the odds are that whatever specialty you go into, you will be using ultrasound, whether it's intensive care medicine, surgery, pediatrics. I think this course will help you. So here's some of the basic goals of the course. We want to get you a basic understanding of the ultrasound machine. We want to get you a basic understanding of ultrasound physics. We're going to expose you to some of the common point of care ultrasound exams that you will be likely to conduct in your future training. This part of the course is intended to get you caught up on things that are now being widely offered to first and second year medical students. And then from there, we want you to develop skills in adequate image acquisition, develop skills in image interpretation, and begin to learn to clinically integrate those findings. So here's a whole bunch of exams that you're going to get exposure to. These are things that we plan to cover with you you will get experience in each one of these exams. And I'm not gonna sit here and read this all off to you right now. You can see it for yourself. And again, this is what you have to look forward to. Now, these are what I call bonus exams. These are things that we may not necessarily cover uh, through our web lectures, which I'm gonna talk more about. But these are exams that you're likely to get experience with while working clinically with us in the emergency department. These are things that we regularly do but just don't have the time in the coming year to, to review in any detail. But there's a good chance you'll get some experience with this as well. Now a good chunk of the course can be summed up in this slide right here. This is kind of a general course outline. Now the expectation is gonna be that you have two scan shifts per month between August and March. Now, there's gonna be one to two hours of lecture content uploaded each month on Schoology and you should have gotten a link on how to access Schoology by now. And then of course, there's gonna be assigned reading and quizzes that go with each one of these lectures. The expectation is going to be that you complete all of your scan shifts and lecture content and lecture quizzes for successful completion of this course. So let's talk a little bit about the scan shifts. The scan shifts are just that. You're gonna come in and work a nine hour shift and you're gonna conduct ultrasounds on our patients there in the emergency department. These scans are gonna be supervised by ultrasound credentialed emergency physicians. So that's why it's important that you actually schedule your shifts with the ultrasound credentialed physicians. Uh, the expectation is that you do 14 total shifts between August and March. This comes out to roughly two shifts per month. You'll notice that if you do two shifts per month from August to March, that comes to 16 shifts. So we gave you one month built in of leeway. If there's a particularly bad month or you're really busy or you're out on the interview trail, this gives you a little bit of time to kind of work around. But again, the expectation is that you do 14 total shifts by March to be able to pass the course. 
And I'll talk to you in a moment about how to record your shift attendance. In years past, I've allowed some leeway where people can kind of front load or what they usually do is actually back load their shifts and they'll do say four, six shifts in February and March. This year, you're not gonna be able to do that because we've taken more students this year and we've tried to give more students the opportunity to learn a little bit about point of care ultrasound than years past. And this translates to you not being able to front load or back load the course. If you do that, what will happen is, is you'll have six or eight people on with you during your scan shift. And this is not a good experience for you because you're not going to learn as much. You're not getting as much of an opportunity to scan patients. You're not getting as much one-on-one -on -one time with the ultrasound faculty. In addition, the ultrasound faculty is going to want to kill me because they have a large number of students who are following them just for ultrasound in addition to their clinical responsibilities on shift on top of their educational responsibilities with the residents educational responsibilities with the students who are on the emed 5001 rotation so overall it's not a great experience for anybody involved so we have to be really strict this year you have to do your two scan shifts per month and we're going to be watching that uh, more closely to see to it that there's no no backloading of shifts now the shifts are going to be scheduled through an interactive calendar on the web as the faculty schedule is released for the emergency department from month to month. She's going to compile a schedule of the ultrasound credentialed faculty for you to select who to work with and on what dates and what times. Now we're not going to allow more than two students working with any one faculty member at any given time. Again, this is for your benefit so you get the opportunity to do more scanning and more one-on-one -on -one time with the faculty and hopefully learn more from your time that you invested in this course. All right, let's talk a little bit about how to schedule a shift on the interactive calendar. You should be getting an invite to join the EMED 5008 calendar. I think it's going to show up though as Rich Gordon uh, because it's actually my account. However, it is being run by one of the administrative assistants. When you get an invite, you'll get a prompt in your inbox here uh, saying that you uh, have had a calendar shared with you. To access the Gmail calendar, if you're not already familiar with this, you'll see these uh, square up here in the upper right hand corner that's made up of small boxes. Select that and then select calendar. Once you get in, you will see probably other calendars that you've made. Um, if you have any pre-existing uh, Google calendars um, and then uh, or other calendars that have been shared with you. This is the uh, calendar attached to my personal Gmail account. But then here is the EMED 5008 calendar again that shows up as Rich Gordon. I like to orient the calendar by month. So I'm just going to select in the upper right hand corner uh, by month. I'm going to take that stuff out. If uh, there's lots of overlap, it may be because it has been uh, tightened down, the boxes have. So you can actually hit this cog in the upper right hand corner and hit compact. And that will expand everything out. So you can see here that there's actually four people working on the 21st. So you can compare your calendar to the calendar uh, for 5008. If you don't want this appearing on your calendar, just unclick it and it'll pop away. If you want to pull it back up and compare it with your previous existing calendar, you can do that. Now, to select a shift, let's say that we want to work with Dr. Lyon on the 19th. What I want you to do is select the 19th and you can really click anywhere that there's not already read on there and that'll prompt you to start an event so uh, I'm gonna say my name is Bob Smith and I want to edit that event all right so let's say that we're working with Dr. Lyon again he comes in at 5 so I'm gonna hit 5 p.m. and it ends at 2 a.m. They're all nine hour shifts. So that's going to cross over into the 20th. All right. And then I'm going to hit save. And there, I've just appeared next to Dr. Lyon. Now, if you want to make it a different color, you can uh, select that and hit edit event again. And you can maybe change it to green or something else so it stands out a little bit better for your colleagues when they come along. Now, let's say that somebody else uh, comes along and decide they also want to work with Dr. Lyon at five. So we'll say that we have Jane Smith here. I'm going to edit the event. I'm going to set that as 5 p.m. 
And again, it's a nine hour shift, so it's gonna end at 2 a.m. It's gonna cross into the 20th. And I'm gonna select this as blue, so it's a little easier to see, hit save. Now you can see we have two people working with Dr. Lyon at 5 p.m. So this section, uh, or I should say this shift is locked off. We have uh, two students that are working with Dr. Lyon. So all that is left is Dr. Kuhn on PEDS at 3P. Uh, and then these are from the previous day, so disregard these days. Uh, excuse me, disregard these shifts. So we'll go back to the month here, and you can see uh, there is two people working with Dr. Lyon at, at 5 p.m. If you decide that you need to come in and change days, you can come in and click, and you can, uh, let's say that you're Bob Smith, you can delete that event, and now it's gone. Now it's available for somebody else to come in and sign up. And that is how you sign up for shifts for 5008. When you come on shift, make sure you introduce yourself to the faculty member that you're going to be working with and tell them you're there for a scan shift. And also introduce yourself to the residents that are there. It's good for them to know that you're there as well. This way, the resident knows to come and get you if they're going to do a ultrasound scan on one of their patients, rather than the resident actually just going and doing it without coming to get you. Additionally, if they notice while reviewing the patient's chart, that the patient has something in their history that might be interesting to scan just for your education they can let you know where that patient is now when you are contacted by faculty or by a resident that an ultrasound needs to be done you can really assist the flow in the emergency department by going ahead and grabbing whatever ultrasound machine one they request or two that you prefer to use or you want to learn more about and go ahead and take it to the bedside get it plugged in and go ahead and boot the machine up you can also go ahead and enter the patient's information which i'll show you a brief demonstration on how to do that and then we're all good to go uh, every faculty member is a little different. I usually ask you to go ahead and scan the patient and tell me your interpretation uh, and diagnosis based on those ultrasound images and then come and get me and I'll come and watch the scan done again. Other faculty prefer to have it all done just once and supervise it that one time. The take home point here is if you go ahead and set everything up and get the ball rolling then there's a little bit more time for us to teach there at the bedside rather than stand there waiting for the machine to boot up and enter patient information. These are obviously things that you guys are all capable of doing and again really helps to flow through the emergency department. Now, unfortunately, not all scan shifts are created equal. Some shifts are going to be really busy and have really interesting pathology for you to see. Other shifts are going to be slow and not much for you to have a look at at all. So everybody will have both of those experiences. We ask that you come prepared with some kind of reading material and kind of enjoy not having a ton of clinical responsibilities while being in the hospital for one of the last times for the rest of your career. So bring something to read, pull up a seat, and try to be flexible flexible because when it's busy, we're going to be doing tons of scans and when it's slow, you'll at least have a backup plan where you can do a little bit of reading or observing any interesting cases or any interesting procedures that are going on in the emergency department. Here is the pictures and names of all the faculty who you'll have an opportunity to work with. Um, you can feel free to work with uh, any one of these faculty members. Dr. Ted Kuhn particularly specializes in uh, pediatric ultrasound as well as international ultrasound, so he kind of brings a, a different spin to the table. So you want to make sure that you spend some time with him at some point doing pediatric uh, ultrasound. I'd also like to point out that our residents, particularly our more senior residents, are quite savvy with ultrasound. I think they get very good training at our program. They certainly can call me biased. And also our nurses are very good as well, particularly with peripheral vascular access. So feel free to ask our residents and nurses questions as well. All right, let's talk a little bit about logging our shifts. When you come on shift, you can log into Schoology or you can do this before you come in shift. I want you to expand the first folder. It'll say welcome, intro, new shift cards, and shift sheets. You can expand that by clicking this arrow on the side here. You can also open the folder all the way up, whatever you prefer to do. And you'll need to select your individual shift sheet. And that looks something like this. This sheet is dedicated specifically to the exams that you do on a single shift. You can put your exam type here, so if you're doing a AAA or a right upper quadrant or a DVT study, you'd write that here. A patient sticker will be placed here, and then if you had any abnormal findings, place that here. At the bottom, you can see your name and then date, 
and then I want you to put let your uh, supervisor sign here and then I want you to write in what number of shifts this is so if this is your third shift this would be three of 14 shifts makes it much easier to track when 27 people are turning in all their forms so make sure you fill that out I want you to take this form right here and scan yourself a copy if you lose this form, there's no proof that you actually came in and scanned anything. The card is just a proof that you arrived, but this form is the proof that you actually came in and tried to learn something. So I need this filled out as well. And this also helps me tally numbers for you if you ever actually want to take your numbers with you wherever you're going uh, for residency. Uh, but I want you to have 14 of these as well as the shift cards turned in at the end of the year. So photocopy yourself a, uh, a copy of your shift sheet form here to keep for your own records in case this gets lost. I want these turned in each month over to uh, Amanda Sabala in Pavilion 2. Now obviously with the scan shift sheets because you have a patient sticker on there there is patient identifiable information on this sheet. So leaving these sheets laying around at a coffee shop or on a bus or on an airplane uh, you have just committed a HIPAA violation. Also, I don't want you uploading these to Schoology because Schoology is not going to be uh, HIPAA compliant, I'm sure. So uh, I don't want you uploading these. These need to be kept in a safe place. That's why I want you, again, turning in the original copy to Amanda Sabala over at Pavilion 2, and the copy for your own personal records need to be kept in a safe place. Uh, hidden place at home and then at the end of the year when you've gotten uh, the green light and completed the entire course I want you to bring all these forms to my office and I'll have them shredded for you in terms of the shift cards the first time you actually go to do a shift you will need to print off a shift card and that's gonna look something like this you can see here for each shift that you do You'll just have this one card here that you print your name, the date, have the supervising faculty member sign, and date. And that'll be one completed card. And you can see there'll be one for each shift. Each page has seven shift cards on it, so at the end of the year, you need to turn in two pages. Now, each month I'm going to want you to upload your shift cards to Schoology so we can be making sure that you're staying on track. The way you're going to do that is that after you get done with your shift and your attending has signed off on the card, I want you to uh, take a picture of it with your iPhone, which is perfectly fine, or any other way you want to do that as long as it's in some kind of picture format, be a PNG or JPEG or, or something along those lines. Um, if you do PDF, it won't upload. So select your shift card deposit here. Once you're in there, you're going to select Add Media, and then you're going to find your file. I've already taken a picture. Here's my Gordon July shift card. I have a PNG. I'm going to hit Choose That, and then once it fully uploads, I can add that media. And there it is right here, saved into the, the box there. Now, obviously, there's going to be multiple of your colleagues who are adding these in, so you can actually add a caption so you can see that it's yours. So you'll just hit edit caption and you'll put that. Then when you, I put Rich Gordon for me, obviously. When you go back in, you'll see here is your document. So, and uh, we can log in and see. Now, obviously, you would have handwritten material here. Now, each additional month, I want you to come in and replace that card. So at the end of let's say September or August even you should have two shifts and then the next month the two additional and then two additional so this should basically be growing um, I want you to replace your old file with the new file the updated file each month so by the end of your rotation you should have basically two of these sheets how you would replace it is you go in select the file there and then you're gonna to come to this little cog here, hit delete. Yes, we want to delete. And then repeat the process to upload the newest file.
Now something new for this year's iteration of the 5008 course, and this came from feedback from one of your colleagues who had taken the course in years past, and that is to get more experience with needle guidance, specifically peripheral vascular access. Now I'll tell you that uh, the, the one that everybody wants to do is obviously central lines, but if you can get good at peripheral IV guidance, you can really just about do anything under ultrasound guidance. And that includes thoracentesis, paracentesis, pericardiocentesis, central lines, uh, A-lines as well. I think that peripheral IV guidance is one of the most challenging things you can do under ultrasound guidance. So we're making that a part of our course this year to try to get you some more experience. Now you can see there's a vascular access folder here. I want you to open that up. And when you do that, you'll see the video that most of you have probably already seen before we did the training sessions. You can feel free to watch that at any time that'll be made available to you. Next, you'll have a IV grading form, and I want you to have 20 peripheral IV attempts this year. They don't have to be sex successful, but I want you to have 20 of these forms completed. You put your name, your date, I want you to put whether you did the live or the web-based instruction, uh, and that was obviously for the lab on the ultrasound orientation day. And you have to have somebody supervise you. Let me say that again. You have to have somebody supervise you. You cannot be doing these uh, IVs alone. All right. So you have to get either a senior resident, an attending, or a nurse to supervise you for these. Now, not all nurses are doing ultrasound guided IVs. So you have to get a nurse specifically who is trained doing the ultrasound guided IV access. You print this form off, and you can do it at the station there in the ED, and you hand this to whoever is supervising you, and you ask them to grade you, and here are the critical actions, and I have to check these off. All right, and then they have to put whoever it was that supervised you, they sign that. Now put the number of attempts you took to get the IV. Now that's taking the needle out and putting it back in the skin, not necessarily redirecting or anything like that. And then they're going to put whether you successfully got the IV or not. Now, obviously, they reserve the right to stop you at any point if they think that, that uh, there's a possibility you could injure the patient. Um, and then once they have filled this form out for you, similar to uploading our shift sheets, you go back out. And you may have already noticed that there is a ultrasound guided VA depot. So I want you to uh, enter that there. So similar to what I've already showed you with the shift cards. You just select add media. You should have taken a picture of that form and then you're gonna attach it in the same fashion. Now, in this case, each of you are doing 20, so there's gonna be a lot of these forms on here. I don't want you to keep replacing these. So just, when you get one done, log on to Schoology and upload it. And uh, that's gonna be another one of your criteria. I need to have 20 forms by the end of the year. Now, in terms of the monthly online assignments, when you first get into the homepage of your 5008 course on Schoology, you'll see this start to grow. Obviously, July is, for the most part, completely up. So you select July, or you can expand it uh, as well, and everything will pop down. And then you've got right here already the FAST exam has been loaded. When you open that, it's going to ask you for your name and email. Make sure that you just put name and EMED 5008. So, Rich Gordon, EMED 5008, and then you can hit continue. Now, you can see these lines down here. That's when a question is going to pop up. I want you to answer those questions. All right, that helps us know that you are learning the material and that we're doing an okay job teaching it if you're getting everything right. The other thing is your reading assignment. You can select that and you'll see the word file pop open. And then it's got a few links here. Here we've got some physics reading. This is bonus reading if you really are into physics and then the fast exam uh, here. At the last thing that you'll have to complete each month will be a quiz that will appear down here. You have to complete that quiz. Now here is, is one of the most important things. The quiz will disappear at the end of every month. So you have to make sure that you complete that. Once it goes away, I prefer not to have to re-upload that quiz. Now I know some things are gonna happen from time to time, but I think 30 days is plenty of time to complete your assignments and your quiz. So 
please keep to a minimum contacting me, asking me to re-upload the quiz. Um, there's a reason this is all automated is because I get very little uh, administrative support to help run this, but this is something that's a passion to me. So make sure you get your quiz done before the end of the month. Now, the last criteria to complete the course is going to be the practical. And again, this came out of feedback from previous students who have taken the course. And we're going to have to coordinate a time where everybody can come over to the ultrasound center. And we're basically going to give you a challenge. Uh, we want to see you conduct some of the exams that you've learned throughout the year and you will need to successfully complete those. Now, we haven't set the date yet on when that will actually be, but I would imagine it will be sometime around the match because that is one of the last times that everybody is in town. Uh, I know that you guys are about to be coming and going out of town a lot over the next several months. So in order to get 27 people in the same place at the same time, We'll probably, again, be doing this either a couple of days before the match or a couple of days after the match. And we'll try to get that date out to you uh, as soon as possible so you guys can be making plans to attend. And we'll have to schedule time slots for you guys to come over and take the practical exam. With regards to the reading material, you will be given a emergency ultrasound pocket reference written by Dr. Lyon, Dr. Minkoff, and Dr. Shiver. Now, during the ultrasound orientation with the intro on how to access the Schoology page. Uh, I did include a link on how to access that MCG pocket reference. Uh, in the video that was distributed to you, I don't believe that link is there. But don't worry, I've actually have the link in the Schoology uh, classroom here. If you open up the uh, welcome intro new shift card shift sheet file, look down here, you'll see the pocket reference PDF. Click that. Once the PDF is loaded, you can select this link right here. And then here is the book for your download. Now, if you want just the PDF, you can select this link. If you want the version that goes with uh, Apple devices, be it your, uh, your laptop or your tablet, you can select this link. This link is ideal because it has uh, videos uh, along with the text. Uh, this is another free reading source which I recommend uh, and it's uh, sonoguide.com and you can see the link there if you type this out in your browser bar it'll take you directly to the website. Now this website we're actually going to be using a good bit for the assigned reading in each month's folder right next to the uh, video lectures I will have a word file that has a link over to this website for your assigned reading. So I think you'll probably get pretty familiar with this website. There's lots of good stuff on there that we're not actually going to assign as reading. So I definitely recommend checking it out for some of those bonus topics that we talked about earlier. Now for a smartphone application that I recommend for you is the one minute ultrasound application produced by the guys from Ultrasound Podcast, which I'll talk about also uh, here in a moment. This is free for your iPhone. And basically you can see right here, they have different topics. And when you click on that, they'll give a, a brief one minute orientation to that particular study. And it's great for you to uh, have a look at prior to going in and doing a, say for example, you're going to do an a order scan. If you want to refresh on how to do that, you can have that on your phone, pull it out, take a look, and then actually go do the study. Now, I just mentioned the Ultrasound Podcast. This is a podcast produced by Mike Mallon and Matt Dawson. Uh, it is a podcast you can get on iTunes or just search Ultrasound Podcast on Google, and it'll take you directly to their website. It's all free. It's a free online access to medical education. They have lots of different lectures on various topics available, uh, and this will be a another great thing to check out. Uh, they have several highly advanced lectures and also several basic lectures. So I'm not going to give you a specific syllabus per se from the Ultrasound Podcast website. Just go on there and have a look at whatever interests you. Uh, I highly recommend it. Now the things that I'm going to review for the next couple of slides are things that you actually have to pay for. I don't have access to this to give to you for free. The Emergency Ultrasound book produced by Ma et al is a great book that's endorsed by the American College of Emergency Physicians. This is likely the book that you would be reading uh, if you go on to do emergency medicine residency or if you do a ultrasound fellowship. So if you're thinking about doing one of those two things or both of those things, then it may be worthwhile to go ahead and pick up this book. Now, I just mentioned a moment ago with the Ultrasound Podcast, Mike Mallon and Matt Dawson, they've produced a two-volume book called Bedside Ultrasound. Each of these is, uh, I believe, $30 a piece. You can read them 
them on your uh, iPad or your Nook, and they have videos built inside. Uh, and it's also a great read. If you're interested in investing a little bit of money for your ultrasound reading, again, this is not mandatory. So we've covered a whole lot of stuff. Let me just give you summaries of the most important stuff. And if there's any fine details uh, that you didn't get, you can go back and look at the video. And also, too, there is a handbook in the welcome folder on Schoology that goes into detail as well. It also goes over a few things I didn't cover, like ways to get cr uh, extra credit for your scan shifts. Uh, you don't have to always come in the department to get credit for a scan shift. There is other ways. Uh, and there's also some other details in there. But let's close this out. What we need from you to be able to have successfully completed the course at the end of March is 14 shift sheets, 14 shift cards, completed all web lectures, reading, and quizzes, and Schoology does track this, so you, you know, I can see if you're not doing them, uh, and then 20 peripheral IV grading forms, again, uploaded to Schoology, and then successful completion of the ultrasound practical, again, is somewhat of a uh, final exam, and that's going to be around March date to follow. So that is it. I hope you enjoy the course. If there is any questions at all at any point in time, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, and I will try to get those questions answered. And I look forward to scanning with you guys in the department.